Thank you all. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Okay. We will call to order the Board of Election Commissioners for the City of Chicago. Uh, good morning. My name is Maricel Hernandez. Seated to my right is Commissioner William Cressy. To my left is Commissioner William uh, Jonathan Swain. Next item on the agenda is consideration of the agenda. Any proposed changes? If not, we'll proceed with approval of the regular board meeting minutes of January 8th, 2019. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Is there a motion to approve the regular board meeting minutes of January 22nd, 2019? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next we'll go on uh, with uh, the executive uh, assistant executive director's report. Uh, Mr. Holliday, good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair and fellow commissioners. I first I would like to start by congratulating and thanking our staff for the outstanding job they did for this election. And more especially thanking Keith Carter and the warehouse staff, Matt Lynn and IT staff, Ron Boyd and Joan Agnew and our general counsel Adam Lasker for the outstanding job that was done doing the five percent at the warehouse. So very short ballot and we got through that without any hitches. Uh, as proclaimed, all ballot processing for February 26th election has been completed. Um, during this election, we started a pilot roving program when we had Geneva Morris out roving in between two wards, and I want to thank her for the job that she did at Pittsburgh. Our payrolls for election judges, election coordinators, and polling place assignments have been completed. All these seats have been returned to the warehouse and being prepped for the April election. All ballots have been released to the printer. Uh, the last four wards were released yesterday. Ballots have been delivered. 41 wards of ballots have been delivered to the warehouse. Uh, the other nine will be delivered by Saturday. Uh, our ballots have been Delivered, started delivering to DX data for our absentee ballots, hoping to start mailing on Friday, on the 15th. We have specimen ballots in as well. Vote by mail has 24,640 requests for mail ballots already. We still have another 24,000 emails to send to voters and encourage them to apply for a vote by mail ballot. The new poll sheet has been processed and they are being printed and should start delivering on Thursday. The IT department has already completed 11 wards of chips and packs for the precinct pre lap All our machines are prepped and ready for our super site and will be delivered on tomorrow and we will open it on 175 West Washington Court to start early voting. The warehouse will begin releasing body supply carriers to movers on Friday to be delivered to the early voting sites for Monday. And then on Saturday, the staff will be out testing the lines, uh, ensuring that our connections are working. We we'll start expecting EV for all of the all York. On March 18th. March 18th. Monday, March 18th. Mm -hmm. So Friday we start at? 175. 175, and then next Monday we'll start citywide uh, early vote. Yes. Great. Uh, the judges department, they continue to assign judges, election coordinators, and our polling place department, they're still uh, making sure that all our polling places are up and running for the upcoming election. Have we had any issues with polling places? People declining and saying they're not coming back this election? Not to my knowledge. Um, we, speaking with Brandon, we yeah, have some. You've had some. Yeah. So, uh, in those instances, uh, Brandon Pickens, he is working on those. Okay. So our staff is very, very, <laughs> extremely busy preparing for the April election. Uh, just one thing I would like to mention that's not on the agenda for you to think about for your consideration: uh, Lake County Press that prints our ballots. Uh, the estimate of ballots we gave for both elections was short. 
So uh, we're looking at a $82,254 shortage. Uh, I'm asking if there's no objections for this to be added to our <coughs> next agenda, if it can't be done here today. So <coughs> math error when we did the okay. original contract. We need the, we need the increased numbers. It's not anything they can address today. Okay. Can so. we um, do it for our next two? Yeah, it'll be on the agenda. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll just let you know. That because okay. we were, we're receiving invoices that are over the amounts. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, uh, is that it? Is that, that all? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I do have one other question. In terms of properly uh, claiming the result of the second election, are we still going to be on a two-week turnaround, or are we going to do the traditional three-week turnaround? Well, I don't know if we've actually made a decision on that yet. I don't think there's quite the pressing need to do it sure. expedited. Um, on the other hand, with fewer races involved because of how many awards do not have runoffs, uh, we might just naturally end up being shorter. But I think we're going to schedule for the four degrees. Yeah. Okay. And we'll hope for really wide margin. And one other last question. Uh, with respect to, uh, maybe it's from Mr. Allen, with respect to vote by mail, what was our percentage of returns for vote by mail for this last election? We were just under. Uh, 50,000, right about 50,000. So it, it was roughly five sixths of uh, the vote by mail ballots ended up coming back. With everything in this election, it all broke late. Whether it was early voting, whether it was the vote by mail returns, or whether it was election day itself, people, we, we saw really low numbers all the way through the 2 p.m. hour, and even then it broke late. Uh, three, four, five, and six p.m. hours were what really lifted us above because we were on pace for 28 percent turnout mm -hmm. at 1 p.m., 2 p.m., and it, it all turned around after. So, like everything else, this election, every election is different, uh, and this one, everything broke late, including that. So we we had, um, you know, you're looking at five times 16 is about 80 percent uh, return. Some of those were. Uh, could not be accepted either because the person had uh, the signature didn't match in rare cases, but more often we had some too late. Uh, so we're going to try to drive that home. So I guess uh, just one thought with respect to that. I don't know if it's an issue, but as, as vote by mail increases, there's certain things you have to think through. Um, uh, I think it would be a, it, it would behoove us to, as we talk about vote by mail, vote, vote by mail, let's go around. That we let people know that if you ask for a vote by mail ballot and didn't turn it in, you still have to ask for a new ballot if you want to vote. Yes. Because I can envision people looking at their ballot and, oh, I have a ballot here, let me just go fill this out and send it in, and that doesn't work. So, no. Right. So, Anything more, Mr. Allen? Uh, several things. Uh, first off, Sorry, maybe we'll talk about <laughs> Um, I, I want to echo the congratulations of the staff, the warehouse, uh, voter registration, community services, um, and uh, pre-election logistics, and lastly, legal. Uh, this is Adam's first run at a municipal, and uh, the board went 181 and 0 on electoral board cases, so, uh, and we also handled, Charles knows this all too well, uh, signature reviews on more than a half a million signatures. I was at a, a League of Women Voters event up in Lake County, and some of the other panelists were suggesting lower signature thresholds, and I was saying, yep, that, that sounds good to us, you know, <laughs> because uh, that would help out a lot. Um, we set some new high marks uh, in the good areas, early voting and vote by mail. Uh, were both records for municipal elections. Um, overall turnout was okay. It's better than you see in other cities, whether they're other large cities like uh, New York, LA, Houston, uh, Miami. Our municipal turnouts are still 150 to 200 percent of theirs. Uh, it's not what we would consider anything to write home about, though, 35 and a half percent. Everything did break late, but uh, you know, it's still nothing like the 40s and 50s and on up to 70% we saw with Harold Washington. 
Uh, we also set a new low mark in uh, an important area, and that was provisional ballots. We had approximately 2,500, which is less than a third of what we, our best mark, uh, about 8,000 for a, a citywide election. So with election day registration, which this board advocated, and other reforms, we're seeing far, far fewer uh, provisional ballots uh, being cast uh, and we're trying to drive that home through the electronic poll books as well. Um, if this runoff seems like a sprint, it's because it is. And there, through a calendar fluke, um, we actually have seven fewer days, a full week less between the municipal and the runoff than we did four years ago. It's because the municipal was on February 24, four years ago. This time it was on the February 26th. And the runoff was April 7th. This year it's April 2nd. So we lost an entire week. And that's why I think there's going to be a lot less pressure on getting the proclamation done so quickly after April. Um, so we've got seven fewer days to work with, and still we're getting in 15 days of early voting in the wards, 18 if, uh, if people need to at the Loop Super site. Uh, the vote by mail ballots, hopefully, as Charles mentioned, will start going out, if not Friday, as early as tomorrow. Um, the polling places, we do have approximately two dozen that are going to change. We also have an early voting location that is going to have to change because renovation work at Merlot Library. So uh, we're, we alerted the alderman there, who is not in a runoff, uh, 44th Ward. So that early voting site had to change because there's renovation work at the library. So uh, we're going to be doing mailings only to the precincts because there is no time much less postage, to afford another mailing ahead of this election. We've never done one for the April runoff. Uh, but we will be doing mailings wherever the precinct polling place has changed between February and April. Uh, that's it. to new business and the first item is the reconsideration of a conformity disqualification of the assessment limits referendum in precinct 38 of Ward 48. Mr. Lasker? Um, well, we, we did receive a request. Is there anyone in the, in the gallery here for this? I don't know. I'm surprised. I communicated with them just as recently as last night. Uh, they have the, the board previously, under its apparent uh, conformity authority, rejected a referendum petition for the 38th precinct of the 48th ward based on insufficient signature amounts. They had requested a reconsideration of that decision. It was on a prior board agenda, but they couldn't make it to that meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, so they asked that we reschedule it to today. I communicated with them, like I said, as recently as yesterday afternoon, expecting them to be here. So, <coughs> I suppose the board should move forward with its reconsideration. What it really comes down to in this instance is that they're requesting that we disregard the language of the signature requirement statute that says that the signature requirement is based on the last gubernatorial election. Um, of course, at the time that they filed their petitions with us and at the time that we then had the apparent conformity authority, the prior gubernatorial election was the November election that we just had, although that happened very close to when they filed the nomination, or the referendum petition. They point out how difficult it can be to file a referendum petition within that time frame under this law, and I certainly agree that it's a challenge. Uh, I do 
you wish that the statute had more specificity to carve out an exception, a time period after elections, so that there could be a better uh, estimate of the signature requirements. Nonetheless, the law is written the way that it is, and we have to operate under it. The election had occurred, but the results had not been claimed. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Do um, you think that something that you talk about the omnibus bill is state that you can talk about having to clarify? But I, I find it troubling as well. Yeah. Um, because if you have someone trying to check how many they need, they fall short, whatever the case is, three or four signatures based on you know imperfect information. And, and honestly, even like with this election, you were counting up for the very last day. Of course. Um, trying to get a clear count of what the number is is, is what we covered. So maybe you could add that to the omnibus bill. I will ask it if we have it. That's a good idea. Um, Section 28-6B of the election. Yep. But unfortunately, at this, this one time, can't do it uh, we, we, it's out of our hands mm -hmm. because of the way uh, the statute is written. Right. I mean, it's my it's my legal opinion that in order to do what they're requesting, we would have to violate the language of the statute, and then if we, if we violate it for them, we'd have to violate it for everybody under the protection. And it's just we shouldn't go down that rabbit hole. We should, as you suggested, talk to Springfield about it. Is there a motion to deny the uh, request for reconsideration? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. The next item is a uh, amendment, a proposed amendment to the professional service agreement with Gary Rasism. And this, uh, the uh, amendment would be to increase the uh, contract amount uh, to $135,000. All other uh, items in the agreement will remain as it was. This is the only amendment, is that correct? That, that is correct. And, uh, amendment document is therefore rather simple, just includes the one paragraph of the compensation. Okay, is there a motion? Okay. Is there any further discussion? If not, is there a motion to approve the amendment? So moved. Is, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion passes and the agreement. Amended agreement is approved. The next item on the agenda is an uh, agreement with Aero Messenger Service for driver and transportation services uh, for the uh, 2019 elections. And uh, Mr. Lasker? Uh, well, and Amanda, we've both been working on it together. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. Uh, we are requesting for the uh, consideration to approve the contract with the uh, Aero Messenger for this election and our uh, election in February as well. Uh, the, the only question I have is I understand that we're piggybacking off the city's contract, you know, right? Yes. But we we're allowed to do so through uh, state procurement statutes? Certainly through the state law and also the contract expressly you know, names us as one of Local units, local government that may use this kind of Okay, that's fine. So that contract sets the rates and, and all that kind of stuff, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just, my only question is, is can we understand why we're, we're looking to improve uh, what happened now? Is there a timing issue with the work of the administrator or something? Well, I, I think that you know, one issue is that the board currently doesn't have it, it has a vacancy in the office of the procurement officer. Uh, and uh, Amanda's been doing a really good job, I think, trying to keep up. Uh, but this slipped through the cracks. Uh, so we are requesting retroactive uh, contract approval back to February. And so the rates that were set for whatever was used was set by the city contract, right? That is correct. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. All right, so this is more of an administrative. This is the technicality. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, got it. Uh, Arrow was, you know, just happy to continue operating under the contract, and so the chairman contacted us to point out that it expired. And the quality of services we've been receiving from Arrow been satisfactory? No complaints. Great. Very good. So, um, women on okay. business as well. Great. Is there a motion to approve uh, the agreement with Arrow uh, Messenger Service for Driver and Transportation Services 
for the 2019 elections in the amount of 680000 So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, Mr. Lasker, is there a legal report? Well, I would just point out that we do have pending uh, election contests filed in the 6th Ward, Aldermanic Race, 34th Ward, Aldermanic Race, and uh, the legal action also, as you heard earlier today, filed by uh, Mr. Walls, who is no longer in the room, but he and I have been having some very nice uh, back and forth conversations about how it's going to go. Um, so I, I have a feeling that we'll have a withdrawal of the sixth ward challenge because uh, the results that you just proclaimed had uh, Roderick Sawyer as the leader, but only with 49.94% of the vote. So there will be a runoff election uh, versus Deborah Foster Bonner, who filed the challenge. Uh, so I think that they've received their intended result now, and we'll withdraw that case. Not sure what's going to happen moving forward in the 34th ward. Uh, the first place finisher there is Carrie Austin. Got 54.31 percent and a 1,012 vote lead over Preston Brown Jr., who has uh, filed for the contest. Now, you know we've we finished canvassing. Now we've gone through obvious discrepancies. Uh, we've been keeping an eye on the 34th ward in particular because we knew uh, from since five days after the election that there was uh, going to be a contest here. I'm not aware of any irregularities. Either. Change the results of 1,012 votes in that race, nonetheless, the case is pending in court. Uh, we'll see the city clerk's case. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have a financial report. We have a balance sheet and voucher listing for the County of Cook, a 2018 appropriation number 18 10, dated March 13, 2019, in the amount of $839,000. $444.90. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Um, we have a request for public comment. Mr. Lasker, um, uh, is there a need for executive session? No, not today. Not today? Okay. If not, if there is no need for executive session, is there a motion to adjourn? to our next regularly scheduled meeting on March 26, 2019. So moved. Is so there a second move to all those second, in favor? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you.